I am Sangi. Welcome, Sangi. Thank you very much. I am prepared to answer questions. I knew that this was coming. Chris, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I am ready. Um, hi, Singy. Hello. Hi. Um, have you visited me in the dream state ever? What is your name? Uh, Chris. And what is your last name? I have 37 Chrises. Okay. Um, can I do a first name? A yes. Sweet first name? Uh, Chris. Where at in the country are you? That will help. Oh, okay. Uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. The Chris in Massachusetts. Yeah. There's only two there. Which city are you in? Oh, um, Springfield? Yes, I know where that is. Yes. What is your question? Okay, um, well, I was wondering if I've been visited by you in the dream state. Not in a dream state. I have not visited anyone. I've been too busy here. But there have been those that have been visiting people. Did it look like a female? Yeah, it was a female and she wore like kind of um, like white um, lacy-ish robe. It had like, it was like almost embroidered or something. Ah, that was Sentia. I believe that was Sentia. Was she seeming very high dimensional? Well, yeah, she was definitely very high dimensional. She was very yeah. floaty, and she was very just like neutral and loving. Um, and she was she's trying to tell me or impart some wisdom, and I don't. She was just really com comforting. I guess is the word. Santia from the Sirius system. Uh, she has been an ambassador to Earth now for several years. She is visiting people that need comforted and in some information that may not be readily available. So, yes, if she has visited you, that is a beautiful thing and probably has left some information in your subconscious that is helping you to remain calm or happy. Mm -hmm. Or have you been changed since her appearance? Yeah, there was definitely a transition going on when she came. Oh, yes, Absolutely. they're downloading. They're letting me know right now what it was. So, okay. Yes. Oh, thank you for... Oh, okay, thanks for letting me know who it was. Um, yes, her name is Sentia. Sentia. Awesome. Yes. I'm, I'll, 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 thank you, I'll remember that. Um, I have another Excellent. question. Um, yes. Well, I had a bedside visitation. Um... I was just kind of taking a nap. I purposely left my blinds open so whoever was out there could kind of watch me and I invoked, like just asked if anyone wants to come visit me to have contact. Um, so some being did come to my bed. There was communication while I was in like some sort of trance state um, and it was a lot of communication. It was a, quite a long communication that we had. I was wondering what this being was up, not up to, but it was fine. It was a neutral interaction. Yes. One moment. I do not know who that was, but I can check for you. One moment, please. Thank you. Ah. They are checking into that. Is there another question? Will I get that answer? Uh, yeah, just for like myself and others. Um, I got a little information regarding like how there's there's different hybridization programs, and for those who like for me, like I was like uh, told I have hybrid kids. I don't know about or, or that I do know about now. Um, and I'm sure there's a few, there's many more, but it's just that, like, there's other hybridization programs, and, like, yes. they don't all cross over is what they let me know, and that's all. That is true. This is what is happening, though. We are trying to make the hybridization programs that are here in your space, your solar system, combined into at least some kind of understanding so that we can keep track of these children and answer questions as they are asked. 
you do have hybrid children from Grukvik near, but mm -hmm. they are not recent. Your children are two, and they are both girls, and they are from about three years ago before the hybridization program was personalized. Therefore, these girls named, you can name them if you want, their, their names from their parents are Korasa. Korasa is the name of the Yuyil girl. Okay. A and Nga. Nga, I guess, would be the closest. Ingya. Ingya. Would be okay. the name of uh, the Pleiadian girl. Yael Pleiadian. Okay, so yeah. Are, and so there are different programs of each other as well. They may not even know each other. Or they do know each well, other, but they're just separate. I get well, it. Well, those two are from the Grukfrick Near program. Oh. So they do know each other, and they're both on ERA. But um, there, are, there might be others that have uh, hybridization programs with you that we are not aware of. Yeah, that's fine. I'm very connected to Planet ERA. Thank you for letting me know where they are. Oh. Yes, we knew that you were connected to ERA, so we did put them there for mm. easy visitation. Sweet. I'll connect with them. I love ERA. Um, yes, did they are oh. now... Two, one is 3.2 years old and one is 3.7 years old. So therefore, they are, they are actually talking and walking and things of this nature and getting along. They are both very lovely children. One has dark hair uh -huh. and one has a sort of a, a blue. The uh, Yuyil has a silver blue hair, but mm -hmm. usually Yuyil do not have hair at all. So... <laughs> To have hair at all is a blessing for a Yu-Yil. <laughs> so, yes, the Yu-Yil has silvery blue, very light colored hair, but not a whole lot of it. But she is m the envy of the kindergarten there. Well, not the kindergarten, the school there. That's funny. Um, it did, now, you told me their ages, but is that the same age as how long? Like how many? No, not really. They're actually more advanced there than they would seem to be on Earth. Right. They would be acting like five and six years old or even higher. I do not have an exact correlation yet. That's something that I will learn later after I get a handle on all the other things I need to know. Yeah, I was just wondering if their ages correlated with when they were actually made. No, not exactly. They will seem more advanced to Earthlings than the 3.2 and 3.7. Right, okay, so it was a, a few years ago that they were that they were created, however, there yeah, were so I'm being told that there will seem like 9 and 10 year olds. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I get it, I get it. They've told me time, well. I've gotten timelines. Um, did you ever find out who that visitor was? Uh, let me find out. Yes, one moment. They do they they're acknowledging that they did find out. One moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> His name is Konkushin Skaripanza. Hey. <laughs> don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> I don't know if I even pronounced it the right the first time. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be on the recording if you want to hear it again. Yeah. Um, it is a male, and he is from um, Alpha Centauri, ah. a planet called Quichin. Oh, neato. Okay. So that is who it was, but we do not know what message he shared with you. It was, he actually wanted a lot of information from me. <laughs> I was like, good thing. I there is a lot of that. new species coming around the planet, and they will want information of those people that they find to be innocents, uh -huh. and those that they want to get information from, from very innocent uh, beginnings, because uh, innocence is very powerful. Do you understand that? Uh, and so yeah. therefore, if they feel that you are a powerful individual, they might want to 
use you as an ambassador or something of that nature. So keep in mind that uh, do not be wary of them necessary, but yeah. necessarily. But if they come back and want you to do things for them, please be wary and uh, resonate with that completely before you do. Yeah, I was fine. I mean, cause like I was in a trance and uh, like there is a lot of eliciting of questioning telepathically from the being, and yes. I was just streaming it astrally, energetically to the being. I yes. um, so it didn't take energy from me. It just Excellent. and I did welcome. It was a neutral. It was fine. That's fine. I know they needed to learn stuff. That's fine. I have not heard that anyone from this particular planet coming to Earth in any form, so this is the first that we've heard of this one. Okay, well, what other... There are ships around in the solar system that do belong to them. Yeah, there's a lot of ships uh, for me. <laughs> I always have ships around. That's why I let them uh, just enter my uh, actual real space instead of just from ship, because I'm always being telepathic. So, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I'll let other people go. That's great. Very well. Thank I you. do. I do have limited time, so please be aware. Yeah. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Who am I speaking to? Bianca. Nice to meet you. Bianca. Very well. Yeah. Thank um, you. Nice to speak to you as well. Thank you. I wanted to uh, ask about the kids that aren't being asked about. Um, we were speaking about the hybrid children that didn't have anybody inquiring about them. I wonder if other parents that have hybrid children can foster them if it's needed. Like myself. Of course. Do not worry. Their parents, their natural parents outside of your world will definitely take care of them very well. There oh. is no, no problem with that. They love their children. They just do not have an attachment yet to the earth. And there is hybridization from humans in these particular hybrid children. And so to find their actual parents, yes, there was. it should have been kept track of from the very beginning. However, mm -hmm. there are some of them that there is no information where the DNA came from. Now... If we match up the DNA with the inquiring person, it can be it can be understood that that is their child. Oh, okay. And um, is there anything you could tell me about my hybrid children? I heard I have seventeen there, but I'm not quite sure. Oh my! You have many. Oh, okay. I could just leave it. Um, at how many? Seventeen? Yeah. There are very few that have that many. Oh. Bianca, <laughs> where are you from? Uh, Just to let you be, I have seven, seven Biancas. Oh, uh, California? California. What portion of California? Central California. Um, Central sorry. California. Very well. Yes, some of those are Grukvik near hybrid children, but not 17. Oh, okay. Some uh, of them are from other species programs. You have about five that oh. are from Grukvik near. Awesome. All right. And they are of five different species. That is interesting that you would do that. <laughs> Was that your request or did you not request it? Oh, um, I'm okay with it, yeah. <laughs> did you not request it, though? Uh, well, not, not, not that I know Some of. Some of I don't... them are rather new. Some of them are within the year. There oh, are two okay. of them within the last year. Those would be the ones I'd be concerned with. That the, if there was permission given. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know, but um. Because that okay. one of them is Fendorian. Uh, the latest one is Fendorian, which is my species, mm -hmm. and uh, the parents are. She's a lovely child. Uh, she does have. It it appears that when doing hybridization with any species, the human face seems to be a predominant or prominent thing that most of them have. They seem to have more human features on their face and then more um, other features in the rest of the body. 
Now, the, there are some that are very, very human, and you probably couldn't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Like the you heal children, and some of the Pleiadian children are very human looking. But your Fendorian child looks Fendorian except for on the face. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, it is a female. And then the, the other child was a um, Pleiadian. Mm -hmm. and it is a he, and he looks fairly human. There are some features that are not human, but he is, the last two within this year are the Pleiadian, who is now seven of your months old, and the female is only about five of your months old. Oh, that's wonderful. So the other ones are older, over a year. A yes. year and six months, a year and nine months, and two years and four months. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Much love. Much love to you. And visit your children often, if you can. Yes. They, yes. We will put your children... You see, if we know that there is one mother, we put all those children and families in one area. That happens to be on, on one of the ships that is going around Australia. So all your children in, are going around a ship in Australia. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome. Hi, Singy. <clears throat> this is Valerie, and I'm asking a question for Jeremy Angelus. And he yeah. would like to know if he is a hybrid child. If he is a hybrid child or has a hybrid child? If he is one. One moment. That's what I thought you said. One moment, please. We can check his DNA from a distance. There is usually hybridization in most human beings, but to be an actual hybrid child will bring out a great deal of one particular hybridization. One moment, please, while we do the scan. Hmm. It will take only one moment. It would appear he's not a full-bred hybrid child, but there was hybridization added to him at about one month at, after birth, which was about 10% of you yield. But there are also Pleiadian, and he had 1% of you yield in him to be, as he was being born, no, 2%. So now he's up to 12%, you see, you yield completely. And he has about 4% Pleiadian, 4% Syrian, 2% Octorian. Very well. He was wanting to know if there was any gray. One moment, please. There is some gray, but it is not a huge amount. It's 1.5%. Okay. But usually when gray is found in the system, it is usually in small quantities. Otherwise, it does affect the action of the human quite extensively. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Yes, 1.5%. Actually, 1.67%. But we go to the closest 1.5%. He says, thank you, and love and light. Love and light. And I do like it that you have a lot of you heal in you. For you, you look actually, I can see you from here, you actually have some you heal features. Continue. Hello, Sabrina. Cindy. This is Sabrina. Sabrina, how are you? I'm pretty good. Did you want to know about your children? Um, well, I think 
There is another one. A third? Yes. And Not I think from Crockford Near. We only have two of yours. There, it, he, he seems to have been recently born. Do you know where? I don't know where, but I just I was just told this week. Um, so I I held him. He was a baby, baby. And it's a male. Like just, it's a male. I think One it's Larry. Be, can I check something, please? Because I do not see anything for a third child on the Grookfick near records. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what species this child is? I think it's Laren. Did you ask for this child? No. One moment, please. It is not from the Grookfick near Lirens. Okay. But someone that knows that you love the Liren children. One moment, obviously. One moment, please. We will have to get back to you on that because we cannot get a hold of the Lyrans that are closest in space that are not from the Alliance. But if it's a Lyran child, it would probably be from there, them. We are oh, trying okay. to get all the species together so that we can keep track of all the children that are being born, whether they are permitted or not. Okay. Um, the uh, my other question was uh, for uh, Leonardo. Yes. Is is he um, just human and Lyran? Yes. Okay. And and what about Maya? Maya. Is she? Is she just? Um, you yell in human, but does she have other? One moment, please. I'm looking up that records. Maya is yes. You yell in human. Okay. Predominantly, yes. Of course, there's always small amounts of other things in there. However, that is what she is predominant is human and you yell. Okay. Um. She so, is so cute. So is there, because actually, is there a way where all of this can be united? Because people are having all these children that they don't know about from... This is what I we're guess, trying to do, dear, is that we're, we're trying to unite all the different programs, at least so that I can have a database to find out where the other ones are from. Okay. Um, this way I will be able to give you information, maybe not a lot, but some information on these children that were not born from the Grookfrick Near program. Now, eventually, we would like to combine this program so that maybe more than one of us will be in control and be able to run it by a group a group of people running it because it looks like it's going to be extensive. There are Syrians, there are reptilians having children. Uh, we do not really, we do, uh, are not really looking to tell people to have reptilian children. It's a very difficult uh, life at the beginning. But there are so many other species that are having programs, but they are not letting anyone know, and we find that this needs to be changed. Grookfrick Near is becoming very much in line with a program that needs to have permission and needs to have uh, 
the documentation of all the visitations and things of this nature and so many things that need to be organized. We would like to put organization on all these other programs and bring them at least into one database so that we can all share information. Yeah, at least I, that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do agree. Like, like a central database of the information so anyone can access it should they need to find out. Yes, this is what we're looking for. Um, yeah, I think that would be definitely very helpful because, yeah, there are many people that have a lot of children. Um, there was uh, one person that asked me to ask you, um, his name is Hayan. Yes, I know Hayan. We only have one. He is from Sweden. Yes. Yes. What is the question? He wanted to know if he had any that he knows of, he doesn't. He has never requested any. No. However, he does have one that is 3.7 years old. No, 3.9 years old. It is a male what? urine. Male urine. Okay. And the name that the parents have given it is Shanshua. Shanshua. Okay. And if he would like to name it, he is very welcome. And if he would like to visit, that would be wonderful. Okay. All right. I, I will let him know. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Is there any others? Barbara? Barbara, is your mic working? I have nine Barbaras. Which one is she? Barbara Joy? Barbara Joy. What is the question? I believe Barbara may be having technical difficulties. Can we skip to uh, Rowie and come back to Barbara? Rowie. There is only one Rowie, so I know that who that is. Rowie, speak to me. Rowie, are you Mike? Rowie was unable to speak but his question was about the second son and do you have any information about that does he know which one moment please what species is the second son Was it a Gurkvik near child? I'm trying to find his file. It does not seem to be here. One moment. Oh, excuse me. He meant literally a second son, like S U N. S U N? Yeah, not really a hybrid topic. Oh, so it isn't about any hybrid children. That is why I cannot find it. Okay, we'll skip that question then. Very well. Barbara, are you uh, able to speak now? There's so much in the side chat, I've lost the list. Uh, Chris, are you next? No. Hi, um, I'm not next. Roy's next. And then me. Rowie's um, question was not about children. So we're passing Rowie for now. You're next. Okay. Um, I was wondering if I was a full hybrid, like complete full hybrid, not just like a hybrid human. Um, I, I can check that for you. What is, your name is Chris, and you're from 
Massachusetts. Right. Yeah. One moment, please. I still have that file available. Great. One moment. Thanks. I'm training some volunteers to help me with some of these tasks. Great. You are a 30% hybrid, which is not full hybrid, but is very high. Interesting. Yes, you have 30% hybridization, which is rather high. Do you feel disconnected from the third dimension often? Yeah, I had to learn how to be human. That is what I thought. You are Pleiadian mostly. I mean, 30%. Yeah, I like my scan because I get ple I get that I'm Pleiadian, Arcturian, Arcturian, Zeta, Reptilian, Andromedian, Andromedan. Well, the highest percentage is Pleiadian at thirty percent. You do have a, those other things in you, but they're not nearly as high as percentages. Do you have the, the next highest is nine percent, which is uh, you you. Oh, okay. But there is some Zeta, mm -hmm. and there is some, you said Octorian, yes, there's some Octorian. Mm -hmm. But, yes, mostly just, it's 30% Pleiadian, which is very high. Reptilian Androm Andromedan? Andromedan is not that high, about 5%. So that's sort of an average number. Reptilian, you're only at about 4%, which is still very high because did you have a rough adolescence? A rough entire life. Well, adolescence, the yeah. adolescence of a reptilian in 4% is rather high, but I think it would be overshadowed by the Pleiadian and you yell. But if you entered a period of your adolescence where you were feeling very fuzzy and blank, Oh, and angry. What age is adolescence? It depends. Um, it depends on you how you develop the reptilian adolescence. It can be anywhere from ten years old to twenty years old. Oh, the teenage years. Yeah, yeah. those ones were horrid. My mom tried to give me a foster care. Ah, not good. Yeah. Anyway, personal stuff. Yep. Not. Well, we will not discuss that at this time. Okay. But I will uh, tell you that, yes, mostly Pleiadian. But there is that 4% reptilian is rather high and does cause some problems. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi, this is Yinji. Yes. How are you today? Greetings. I am well. Uh, my question is, um, I know I already have one hybrid son, and um, I'm wondering if I um, am going to have any more children. Not unless you request it. Right now there is no request in for a second child that I have. So if I wanted to request it, I would just ask you? Yes, I would have to put it in the records. They would have to either collect another specimen or use the DNA that is on hand. Okay. That would be up to you as well. Yes. All right. And then um, my son, Micah, on ERA. Yes. Uh, how old is he now? Oh, let me check. What was the last time you checked? He's like five. He's like five. Yes. Okay. All right. That was all I had. Very well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day. My time is growing very short. Okay. Can we fit one more question in from yes. Kim? From Kim, please. Kim. 
Hello, my friend. It's How are so you? nice of you to be here. Thank you so much. I spoke to, to her about finding someone just like you to help her out, and I'm so excited that you have stepped up to help us all. That's oh, awesome. Uh, I just would like to send a message um, to Vel Valina and Zoom. They're the parents of my uh, Yale hybrid child named Mika. Um, I do send them love all the time. I just like yeah. an affirmation that they do hear from me. Um, yes. oh, that's my first question. I have a very second, a very fast, quick question. A second yes. question as well, if that's all right. Continue. Very good. Okay. Uh, the other two. I have two other children, uh, Soul Radiant and Ultraviolet. Yes. I don't have the parents' names. So I was just wondering if you'd tell me a little bit more about them. Their ultraviolet is just amazing, really. She's taken off. Actually, in her records, it says that she is brilliant and that she <laughs> has um, very creative aspects to her. And with her name being ultraviolet, she has taken to learning the color palette and using it in some of her artwork. Oh, lovely. So, and also, she is very interested in science and music. Ah, uh, yes, that doesn't surprise me. Yes. And, and Sol, he's the son. He is... Both at the same time. He's high on mathematics. <laughs> and engineering. And um, actually, um, he's a very much of an inventor at this point. Wow, that's amazing. So that's and their ages, roughly, do you have a moment to tell me that, please? Um, a moment to tell you what? Their ages. One moment. Mm -hmm. Do you want their earth ages or the? No, you want their other. Oh, cool. Yes, please. Right now, they're equivalents to... I'm trying to figure that out. Well, <laughs> it's not easy. I don't. 13, I think the one ultraviolet is the younger, I believe. Yeah. She is equivalent to 14 years of age ah. in her thought process, mm -hmm. and Saul is equivalent to 17. Ah, nice. Okay, yep. Thank you so much for you are very welcome in their lovely children. Thank you very much. Thank but now you. I must go. I'm sorry. That is all the time I have. There is so much work to be done here. Thank it you is for okay, your time. And we just want to, yes, thank you for your time, Sengi. And we want to tell you what a pleasure it was to have you come and speak with us today. Yes, I will do it again sometime. And I just hope that this is helpful. Very helpful. Thank you again. Namaste. Namaste. Very well, then. All right. Hello? Welcome back, Jim. Hey. She said at the very end there that she had set aside a longer block of time for you. However, something came up and she was called away. Oh, it was fine. She did a wonderful job, Jim. You better get a drink, yes. <laughs> that was long for you. <laughs> it was? Oh, okay. It was. Okay. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? Of course. It was wonderful. <laughs> And I have to go soon, too, because I have another session coming up. So, but, well, Thank um, you so much, Jim. Uh, we did end up having quite a few people join. We made it over 10. Everything went smooth. So oh, wonderful it looks session, like everyone. Go on there, yeah. We were over 16 at one We hit 16, I believe, at one point. Oh, very yeah, I good. Think I, I think I might have even counted 17, so test uh, mission accomplished. Yeah, so we hit 19, guys. 19, yay. 
19? Wow. 19, yeah. Good job, Yay. everyone. And some really Yay. great questions, too. And um, just uh, there was another question I think you could just answer on the side here if you would like to, uh, Jim. But uh, right. Carolina yeah. would like to know what species is Sengi? Is, is Seng She's Fendorian. Yes, Fendorian. She's Wonderful. Fendorian. She's a um, uh, she took over. They the, when the Fendorians became part of Gurkfignir, they immediately started training him for all different kinds of things on the ships, so that some people could take uh, vacations and get off the ships because they were there for long periods of time. And so now there's many many Fendorians on the ships around the Earth and uh, taking over really nice positions because they're very smart and learn very quickly. So it's very cool. So I love it. And so did Tukur. Tukur was very happy to give up some of that responsibility. She just had too much. So. Yay, go Tukur. 